Mary spend this guitar story, six string tales of woe and glory. Send me your guitar stories, and I might choose to read your guitar stories. Hi, my name is Mary Spender, and welcome to another episode of Guitar Stories. We have a special guest, my new glasses, in this episode. Um, so, yep, yeah, feel free to leave jokes of me looking like Miranda Priestley out of um, Devil Wears Prada in the comments below. Already had a few comments. Um, but I just want to channel my dad from the 1970s. So I just went all out. But it means I can read the screen better. Anyway, thank you very much for uh, sending in your stories. If you haven't yet, please read the description to find out how you can submit your guitar story. But otherwise, let's just get into it. This one is called The Legend of the White Guitar. Hi Mary, I'm Nate, one of your patrons. You had asked for pictures of guitars with great stories and oh man, do I have a good one. The super short version is, I found a beautiful guitar in a pawn shop when I was 14 or 15. I worked all year long to save up to get it. I had that guitar for 15 years, then found out it was stolen. So I sent it back to the rightful owner. Turns out he was a guitar playing legend in country music and early rock and roll. I got to meet him and his wife and we became good friends. He passed away recently and I have re-inherited the white guitar. I took these pictures when I first met him in 2014. No, the link doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? So I just clicked the link. It doesn't, I think it's expired. It doesn't work. Um, so Nate, email me and let me know more about it because I, I want to know more. I want to know who he is. Anyway, next one. Ethan has sent in an email saying, the guitar that almost killed me. So, hello Mary, season's greetings from Canada. It was Christmas 2002. I had been inspired by my mother and my uncle to pick up the guitar and had asked for an acoustic guitar for Christmas. While my parents were excited for me to learn, they most definitely didn't know a good guitar from a bad one. My mother had a guitar of her own, but being that I was only seven years old and had three younger siblings to boot, seeing her one and only guitar get knocked around by a bunch of rowdy kids was a little scary. So my parents did what any parent on a budget would do and bought me a child's first acoustic guitar. I was over the moon when I saw the guitar shaped box under the tree, while at first I was a little saddened by the fact that it wasn't like the one my uncle or my mum played. I was just so excited. The guitar was a monstrosity. <laughs> Despite being child size, the frets were way too far apart for my small hands and the stupid thing never stayed in tune. At this point in time, my mother was very busy with my younger siblings to really teach me anything. Over the weeks leading up to Christmas, I'd been taught A minor and E minor. That's it. Fast forward a few months and I'd been badly playing nothing but those two chords on a permanently out of tune, now broken guitar, courtesy of my younger sister. While I was supposed to be doing homework, I was stopping occasionally to try and tune my guitar, something that I was never taught to do. Every time I thought I heard someone coming, I'd put the guitar down and pretend like I was still doing my homework. I remember thinking to myself, hmm, this thick string at the top needs to sound higher. I tuned that poor string so high, plucking it could shatter glass. Now on a normal guitar, that string would have snapped. These were steel strings on what was basically the worst nylon guitar imaginable. I kept hearing a click sound, but I didn't think anything of it. I had momentarily set it down to pretend I was studying when I was startled half to death and hit in the back of the head by a ball end. The entire bridge had exploded off of the body. Had I been holding it only a second longer, I might have lost a hand or worse. Surprisingly, no one else heard the explosion, so I did what any kid that was supposed to be doing homework would do. I told my parents that the guitar had exploded on its own, and they believed me. I kept the lie going for years until I learned to, to laugh at it. The whole experience was so jarring that I wouldn't touch another guitar until I was 15. I'm so sorry, Ethan. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm 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 commiserating with you. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, even just breaking a a string when you're first first learning is terrifying. Like it's it 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 really could take out an eye. So um 
Well, not with these glasses on anyway, but oh my god, what? <laughs> That entertained me. I'm so sorry, but you're a very sweet, sweet little boy. 2002, and you're seven. That means you're younger than me. Um, <laughs> not sure how I feel about that. This one comes from Edgar, and it's called Buying a Rubbish Instrument for Christmas. Hello, Mary. I hope you're doing well. I love your music and YouTube videos. Thank you. My name is Edgar, and this is the story of someone who had never played an instrument and bought himself a really cheap one because he wanted to learn how to play it. A little bit of context first. I am from Mexico and in this country and some places in the US, there's a music genre called Norterno? Northern music. I, my pronunciation is gonna be absolutely abysmal. Bands that perform this kind of music genre typically use four instruments, accordion, bass, a drum kit, and a bajo quinto? Bajo quinto? Oh my God which is the instrument that I bought. It is similar to a guitar, but it is just five pairs of strings. Just five pairs of strings. <laughs> it is used to play the bass and chords at the same time, just kind of the way you play guitar. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, back to the story. I really wanted to learn how to play this instrument because I like this music genre. So after being done buying Christmas presents, I saw this really cheap instrument on the Facebook marketplace, brand new, the post read. <laughs> I had a bit of money left, so I contacted the seller and bought it without knowing a single thing about it. It is a rubbish instrument. Its sound is really bad. It has the strings uh, really separated from the fretboard. Oh no, it barely stays in tune and the bridge is not that well attached to the body. The bridge is not that well attached to the body. Oh, I'm so sorry. Whenever I had a practice session with the instrument, it lasted about 10 minutes because my hand and finger fingers hurt and the pain lasted throughout the whole day. Mm -hmm. This happened day after day, but I never stopped practicing. At first I felt dumb for buying that instrument, but now I'm glad I did. It helped me gain strength on my left hand, so now I can play for a longer time with no effort. It also helped me really take advantage of practice time and take that time seriously. My Bajo Quinto is still a rubbish instrument, but now I appreciate it a lot because it had taught me more than just playing music. In retrospective, it was one of the best self-bought Christmas presents ever. Sorry for my bad English. No, sorry, no, <laughs> don't apologize. It is not my native language. Stay safe and keep on with your great work. Cheers. I think you guys will be able to tell that um, my, uh, uh, teaching myself Spanish has fallen by the wayside. But anyway, uh, it's a, you know, it can be a New Year's resolution. This one comes from Alex, it's called The Family Rickenbacker. Hi Mary, I've been watching your videos for a few years now and I really hope you enjoy the story. My guitar story starts when I first met my wife Murphy. We were getting to know each other and when I mentioned playing guitar, she said that her late father was a huge Beatles fan and his guitar was left at her mum's house in Ireland. Fast forward a few months and we went to visit her mum in Ireland and the guitar was mentioned. So she went and found it for me to have a go. So out came a short looking gray and black rectangular case. When I opened it up, I let out a loud gasp. There it was, a black Rickenbacker, just like the one John Lennon played. After doing some research, I found that the model number was a 350V363. I'm not sure about the year, but it seems to be late 90s to early 2000s model reissue. I played the guitar every time we visited, and after getting married, we drove from England to Ireland to collect some of my wife's belongings, including this guitar. Lucky you. I'm proud to be responsible for looking after this guitar, and since I did not have the pleasure of meeting my father-in-law, I love having his guitar as a way to connect with him. Hmm. I will include a few pictures below along with a couple of my guitars. Keep up the amazing content, Alex. Yes. That's so cool. Ooh. And Les Paul. Ooh. And a strap. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Alex. Um, that's a very, very special guitar. Okay, this one is very cool. This one comes from Roberto. I just had to share this with you, even if it doesn't make the cut. I hope this encourages you to build your own guitar. This is called the Nightcaster, the blackest black Telecaster ever built. So I wanted to own the blackest black Telecaster, maybe in the world. They don't sell it, 
so I built it. I got a Telecaster body, a Squire neck, a set of fourth generation Fender noiseless pickups and a bottle of Stuart Semples BLK 3.0. And yes, you can't get this paint if you're Anish Kapoor. <laughs> you can't or you can get this paint if you're Anish Kapoor. So I've just Googled. Um, Anish Kapoor obviously owns the rights to the blackest colour ever made. So another artist made his own super black and now it's even blacker. And anyone is allowed to use Stuart Sempler's new black 3.0, except Kapoor. <laughs> that, is, that is genius. That is so genius. <laughs> That's good to know. For anyone else who's like um, uh, interested in, in history of art like I am, like that. <laughs> That's hilarious. I didn't realise. That's so awesome. Thank you for introducing me that to, to that, Roberto. That's, <laughs> that's made me chuckle. After a couple of tries, I finally got what I think is the best look with the paint. After the third coat of BLK 3.0, I sanded it with 600 grit sandpaper. This reduced the blackest black effect in the body compared with the pit guard but the guitar is still very, very, very black and insanely matte. Here are some pictures that I took, both with my camera and my cell phone. I call this beauty the Nightcaster. Wow. Wow, it's so badass. It's so cool. It's so cool. I mean, that is a real art piece. Okay. Oh my God, I don't want to copy you, Roberto, but I might have to because that is so cool. Come on, Mary, build your first guitar. You're going to love it. <laughs> oh my God, you guys do know that black is my favorite color. I want to actually let everyone who's actually watching this far into this episode into a secret. But the reason I wear all black is because firstly, I just like the look of black clothing. I just, I just do. and it's easier to light uh, on camera, I find anyway. So it also just means that, you know, if I was wearing different colors every day, I don't even know why I'm justifying myself, but I am, I feel the need to. Um, if I was wearing different colors in different videos, uh, you, you might like be distracted by clothes. And so I just feel like at least people aren't like caring about what I wear. And also I'm like, I, I grew up being a classical musician and on stage we'd always wear all black and um, I just feel like I always want to be like performing in black. So there we go. <laughs> There's my justification. Oh man, I think we're going to have to end on that. All right. I'm so glad I learned something. Thanks, Roberto. And thanks to everyone that um, sent in a story in this episode. I really, really appreciate it. If you haven't already, please submit your story. We've had so many entries, like this is something, you know, I started earlier this year and I'm just so, so glad I did. But yeah, thank you for watching. Subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and I will see you very soon.